Good morning, Gladwin for Methodist Church. Uh, it's a privilege to, to be joined together by the Spirit of God as we come together this morning to worship Him. Uh, as you see, I am now in a different part of the, uh, of the church building uh, and uh, just taking this time to, um, to be about in, in different places, different locations of the church building as we, uh, as we come together virtually um, as well. Uh, and so at our time of worship this morning, uh, we will, of course, will be singing songs of praise to you. Uh, we will also uh, be hearing from Dr. Al uh, through a scripture reading, uh, and uh, then we'll turn to God's Word. Uh, some of you may have uh, noticed on our Facebook page that this morning we also uh, will have the opportunity to, uh, to be united together by the Holy Spirit. Uh, as we come to the Lord's table and participate in communion. Uh, so uh, if you're not quite ready for that uh, logistically with, uh, uh, with whatever works for the, the elements uh, for you, uh, representing the bread and the wine, um, certainly feel free uh, as, you, uh, as you move about during the, uh, the first portion of our worship service to, to get those items together. Uh, and I would encourage you to uh, to get together with all in your household and uh, make this a special, special time of worship this morning. Would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, Almighty God, uh, we praise you this morning uh, for uh, so many things. Um, it's been amazing during this, this unique time to, to see and witness community come together it's been amazing during this time to, to see people be more intentional in their managing of relationships. And we know, Lord, that um, while you certainly have not, uh, not created this unique dynamic uh, in which we live right now with COVID-19 and, um, and the, the, the lockdown, uh, we know that you are redeeming this moment for good. Uh, we trust, Lord, that uh, in the midst of our time of worship uh, this morning, that, uh, that we would be able to sense togetherness. That we may not uh, see across household to household, uh, family to family, like we typically would in our sanctuary, uh, in our times of fellowship, uh, that we would still feel that, um, that closeness that comes uh, through you. Lord, this morning, as we contemplate these things, uh, we, we praise you. Uh, we purpose ourselves to, uh, to take part in singing these songs of worship to you, to, uh, to be purposeful and intentional in shutting off and distancing ourselves from the distractions that can occur within our homes. And just being together in this moment with you, with one another. That we would experience your presence, that we would experience your power this morning. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning, Gladwin Pre-Methodist Church. I was asked to read Psalm 16 for you this morning. Keep me safe, my God, for in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, you are my Lord. Apart from you, I have no good thing. I say of the holy people who are in the land, they are the noble ones in whom is all my delight. Those who run after other gods will suffer more and more. I will not pour out libations of blood to such gods or take up their names on my lips. Lord, you alone are my portion and my cup. You make my lot secure. The boundary lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. Surely I have delight, a delightful inheritance. I will praise the Lord who counsels me. Even at night, my heart instructs me. I keep my eyes always on the Lord. With him at my right hand, I will not be shaken. Therefore, my heart is glad and my tongue rejoices. My body also will rest secure because you will not abandon me to the realm of the dead, nor will you let your faithful one see decay. 
You make known to me the path of life. You fill me with joy in your presence, with eternal pleasures at your right hand. I miss everybody. Stay safe and God bless. Well, uh, church, I hope you had a, a great time uh, singing songs of praise to our, our great and wonderful God this morning. Uh, as we turn our attention back to, uh, back to his word, his scriptures, um, and as we come away from, from Easter Sunday, um, I hope to take us through a, a time, uh, a season over the next few weeks of, um, yes, continuing to, uh, to experience the presence of God, uh, but also uh, understanding what it means to, to have life in him and to wait upon him. Uh, and so... Uh, this morning, I want to share with you a, a, a passage from the book of Romans. Uh, and Romans was a, a letter written to um, Jewish Christians, Jewish believers uh, in, the, uh, in the Roman Empire, uh, in Rome, uh, of course. And uh, meant to um, encourage uh, and meant to um, uh, really shore up their faith. Uh, I always find personally that uh, that any time um, I feel like my, my faith may be wavering, uh, I feel like that uh, uh, I need kind of that extra jolt to spend time in the book of Romans. Uh, it doesn't take very long in, in reading and thinking about that to, to have my, my love for Christ uh, really reignited and uh, the, the flames burning great again. And so I want to share with you this morning from Romans chapter 5, and we are going to uh, look at the first five verses of Romans chapter 5. Uh, and what is written there is this, Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him we have also obtained access by faith into this grace in which we stand, and we rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Not only that, but we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not put us to shame. Because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit, who has been given to us. You know, often in the uh, the, the week or so after Easter, uh, I find that I begin to think about what that time frame must have been like for uh, for Jesus' closest disciples. Uh, these were uh, men and women who um, traveled with him. Uh, who uh, followed him, being the, uh, the literal definition of disciple, uh, who learned from him, who understood um, really before most of the, uh, the culture, uh, the people at the time, that Jesus was indeed the Messiah, the Christ, uh, the Savior. And, you know, they, they did this, um, and uh, they watched... They watched him put to death on a cross. And they had probably what was uh, uh, the darkest, uh, most confusing uh, few days between, uh, between Jesus' crucifixion and his resurrection. And then after his resurrection, uh, as we looked at and remembered and celebrated last week on Easter Sunday, uh, we see that, that Jesus did indeed spend time uh, with his disciples. Uh, the risen Christ spent time with them. Brought peace in the midst of chaos and confusion. Taught them encouraged them, helped to make their understanding of, of not only who he was, but his purpose more complete. And I wonder uh, what 
it must have been like in experiencing that and then uh, being really in this, this holding pattern of sorts as, uh, as Jesus instructed them to, uh, to stay in Jerusalem, to wait um, with the promise of what we know and understand uh, of the gift of the Holy Spirit, the gift of God's own Spirit, to come and dwell amongst them and within them. And so, uh, just thinking about that and thinking about my my own faith journey um, and thinking about this idea of, of uh, living by faith while waiting upon the Lord uh, really challenges me. It's really thought-provoking to me. Uh, you see, I don't, I don't think uh, many of us are particularly patient people, right? Uh, we, uh, we, we experience the events of our lives. We, um, as part of the American culture, we know what we want and we go after it and we pursue it uh, relentlessly. And so when we are in, in a position of waiting, in a position of... Uh, In a sense, where we find ourselves now with uh, with with COVID-19 uh, and this wondering when life will return to normal or or what the new normal will look like uh, and what impact that will have uh, for uh, for work, for social activities, for church, for uh, for so many other things, uh, it, it feels like particularly over well, maybe the last week or so, it feels like we are in the midst of or at the point where uh, we're in this, uh, the, as I've heard the term, pregnant pause. That energy is building or, um, you know, maybe the energy is nervous energy, I uh, don't know. But uh, we're in this time of, of anticipation, wondering what's next? What is it going to look like? What is life going to be like uh, in all those regards and, and, and many more? And it leaves us really uh, in a place and with the opportunity to, to be dependent upon our faith, uh, to rely on our faith in God, uh, just as those disciples uh, had to do uh, in this, this time period uh, between Jesus' resurrection and uh, what we'll celebrate in a handful of weeks um, uh, on the day of Pentecost, uh, the day of, of the coming of, of His Spirit, His Holy Spirit. And so, um, you know, we see, we see Paul's writing to, uh, to the believers in, in Rome uh, here, uh, pointing out this... Um, this amazing reality of what it means to have life in Christ and how it impacts us in these situations where, uh, where maybe uh, nervousness or anxiety can set in or, uh, you know, when we're just uh, uh, full of that anticipation and that nervous energy of what's next. And so, uh, so Paul writes, you know, hey, we, you and I, we've been justified by faith. Our standing with God, uh, our standing before God, comes through faith, faith in the risen Christ, faith in the reality that, uh, that he is our Savior who, who paid the price uh, for our, uh, our sins past, our sins present, uh, our sins future. And because we have that, uh, that, that standing with God and that, that ability to, uh, to approach him, that ability to commune with him, uh, that ability to, to walk and live in his presence, we have that peace with him. We have that peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Because of that faith, we have, uh, we have um, access to the grace given by God. Uh, and because of that faith, 
We rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Now I want to stop there uh, and um, encourage you to ponder that phrase um, for a moment. We rejoice. We'll give praise for. We have uh, feelings and expressions of joy in the hope, the, the, the confidence, the um, promise of things yet to come, of the glory of God. I mean, think about the, uh, the glory of God. And, uh, you know, a few weeks ago, I had encouraged you all to, uh, to take time and consider and maybe share uh, what, uh, what image of God um, comes to mind when you approach him in prayer. And I had shared with you that, uh, that one of the two primary images of God that I see is uh, that picture that Isaiah painted for us of, of God high and lifted up seated on his throne and his robes filling the tabernacle. Uh, the fullness of the glory of God, almighty, God, perfect, God, completely holy. So we rejoice in the hope that comes from that. And by doing so, and as part of doing so, uh, we then are able to rejoice in our sufferings. For we know that, uh, that sufferings come. We know that um, the challenges of life uh, come and go in many ways. And in the midst of, of your present experience, uh, there are uh, at the very least, inconveniences that you're in the midst of right now, and, and what some may experience is, uh, are considered to be actual uh, suffering. But yet, uh, because of our faith and our hope in the glory of God, we rejoice for those sufferings. Why? Because that suffering, through that suffering, God does something within us. He develops us, he nurtures us, he purifies us, he, he forms us more into his image. He, um, he, he, he crafts and increases our, our holiness, cutting away and destroying and uh, uh, getting rid of that which is unholy, uh, forming, a, forming us uh, increasingly so into, um, into his image. Uh, forming us increasingly so uh, into Christ-likeness. And so, um, through that process, as, uh, as Paul lays out here, uh, we joy rejoice in those sufferings because we know, we know because it's written here in God's Word, we know from our past experience, that suffering produces endurance. For sure, though the suffering you may be in the midst of today or in this season is not um, exactly like any suffering that you've experienced before, for sure you can think back and see how uh, you may have experienced, and you, you have, not may, you have experienced suffering in the past, and you've come through it. And you grew from it. And so we know that the suffering produces endurance. And through that endurance, uh, our character builds and, and, and develops. And out of that, we come back to, to, to hope again. See, as we, um, as we are able and as we are able to uh, to view our suffering with uh, with the mind of Christ as we are able to do that we see that there's purpose in it we see that um, God works in the midst of that suffering 
And we know because of past experience, we know because of the, uh, the witness, the testimony, the experience of others, that we're going to, to grow and develop through that. And so that brings us back to hope that in the midst of whatever we're going through, because of our faith in Christ, and because of uh, the realities of that relationship with him, we trust, we're able to trust and have confidence that um, as difficult as today may be, As challenging as it may be, as perhaps crushing as it may be, I have hope. I have that hope that comes only for Jesus Christ. We have that hope uh, because, as Scripture says, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. We can think back of times where we have experienced God's love. But what Paul is saying here and teaching us is, um, as we have God's very Holy Spirit uh, within us, we also have God's love within us. Something much closer and much more special than simply experiencing his love. We possess his love. We possess his love that gives us hope. We possess his love that is to be stewarded and is to be shared. And so with that truth in mind this morning, with the reality that no matter what you're going through today, no matter what your present suffering may be, uh, that hope comes from Christ and there is purpose in the midst of that suffering. We come together to the Lord's table to worship him, to acknowledge him, to be joined together as we take part in the sacrament of confession, the sacrament of profession, um, and experience a new God's grace today. So I'm going to uh, invite my wife, um, Michelle, to, uh, to come and sit by me here. And uh, as we talked about earlier, uh, we, we're in our homes. Uh, you are in your homes. We happen to be right now uh, in the church, but... Um, uh, we did bring with us um, items like you may be using in, in your homes. Uh, I want you to rest assured and take peace in the reality that uh, the exact makeup of the elements of, uh, of communion are not what matters here. Uh, it is the attitude and spirit of, um, of our heart. Uh, it is our mindset with this. Um, it is our act of uh, surrender and submission and our, uh, our engagement in, this, um, in this, uh, this, this blessed event, this holy act. So, um, in our case, uh, we happen to have uh, apple juice here because apple juice is what we have at home. Uh, and uh, we have some salting crackers. Um, in your case, it may look different. Uh, and that is, that is totally, totally fine. Um, I do want to share with you uh, 
uh, some words, some writings that, uh, that we customarily use uh, during the, this time of communion. Uh, we will jointly um, consecrate the elements, so uh, I hope you do have those, um, those collected in front of you um, for all within your house who desire to participate. Um, but would you just humble yourself before God with me? as I share these words, and as we experience these words. You, who truly and earnestly repent of your sins, who live in love and, live in love and peace with your neighbors, and who intend to lead a new life, following the commandments of God and walking in his holy ways, draw near with faith and take this holy sacrament to your comfort and humbly make your honest confession to Almighty God. And as we pray, Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all people, we confess that we have sinned and we are deeply grieved as we remember the wickedness of our past lives. We have sinned against you your holiness and your love. And we deserve only your indignation and anger. We sincerely repent and we are genuinely sorry for all wrongdoing and every failure to do the things we should. Our hearts are grieved and we acknowledge that we are hopeless without your grace. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us. Cleanse us. Give us strength to serve and please you in newness of life and to honor and praise your name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Would you join with uh, with Michelle and I as we um, as we recite uh, and pray the Lord's Prayer? Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be Thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We do not come to this, your table, O merciful Lord with self-confidence and pride, trusting in our own righteousness. But we trust in your great and many mercies. We are not worthy to gather the crumbs from under your table, but you, O Lord, are unchanging in your mercy and your nature is love. Grant us, therefore, God of mercy, God of grace, so to eat at this your table, that we may receive in spirit and in truth the body of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and the merits of his shed blood, so that we may live and grow in his likeness, and being washed and cleansed through his most precious blood, we may evermore live in him and he in us. Amen. And let us pray uh, to consecrate, to set aside and make holy uh, the elements uh, that you have before you in your home. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who gave in love your only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who by his sacrifice offered once for all did provide a full, perfect, 
and sufficient atonement for the sins of the whole world. We come now to your table in obedience to your Son, Jesus Christ, who in his holy gospel commanded us to continue a perpetual memory of his precious death until he comes again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we humbly ask and grant that we, receiving this bread and this cup, as he commanded, and in the memory of his passion and death, may partake of his most blessed body and blood. So I invite you uh, at this time to, um, to take the elements that you have uh, available before you um, representing uh, his body broken for you, broken for me, and distribute them amongst um, your family members uh, and all who are in your house. Um, and in doing so, remember that in the night of his betrayal, Jesus took the bread and we had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us take and eat together. And would you also now um, distribute what, uh, what you have available in front of you to, um, to represent his blood. And in doing so, that in like manner, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of this, all of you. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is, which is shed for you and for many for the remissions of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Amen. Would you take and drink? This day, this week, I leave you with, uh, with these words as a um, proper benediction. And may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be yours now and forever. Amen.